Good afternoon and welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me at Market Site is Kevin Kelly, he's a managing partner over at Benchmark Capital. Thank you very much for joining us. Great to have you back in the studio. Thank you. It's great to be back. All right. So let's talk about publicly traded REITs and why an investor wants to get involved with them. A publicly traded publicly traded REITs are a great uh, asset class for investors to look at. And one of them is because of the liquidity, right? So you can go on the exchange and just buy and trade. Mm -hmm. Typically, real estate is illiquid. So this is a liquid asset. Also, it helps you with the diversification. They own many properties all across the country. And a lot of them specifically focus on individual individual sector classes. So it's a great way to come in and actually buy uh, real estate on a liquid and uh, d diverse basis. Now, have REITs been impacted by tax reform? Yeah. So one of the one of the most advantageous benefits of REITs is that they actually have to pass through 90 percent of their income. That's why you see they have above average yields when you compare them to a company, other publicly traded companies. And so with the recent tax package, the pass through actually increases the payouts that they can give. So you get a 20 percent benefit. And have REITs outperformed equity performance in recent years? Yeah, so what's pretty fascinating is if you look over the long-term horizon, they actually have had better performance and lower volatility than other publicly traded companies. So that's a pretty interesting aspect because it's not as volatile, right? Rents always come in and they typically go up with inflation as well as um, the growing economy. But what's been interesting this year is worries over the rising interest rate environment has really hurt REITs. So now a lot of REITs are trading below their net asset value. So you see about their about 15% is the average of the discount to the net asset value of REITs. All right, well, let's talk about some of the ETFs that you guys had recently launched and the backbone of technology. Which REIT applies to that and why? Yeah, that's actually the data and infrastructure um, index. And when you look at it, the ticker is SRVR. And so it's- Server. Server. Very clever. Server. Yeah, because that's what it owns. It owns the servers as well as the cell phone towers. So if you think about it, you pull out your phone and then you enter in an online order, it actually goes up to the cell phone tower, which then sends it to the server that processes the transaction, which then sends it to the industrial warehouse that ships you the package. But when the industrial warehouse gets the order that's all done through servers, and then goes on their trucks, which all the information is uh, processed right. by servers. So this is really the backbone of the internet. And, and one thing I'd like to say is that one of the largest constituents actually is 85% of all internet traffic. So that's pretty telling because all these companies, think about Amazon, Netflix, everybody mm -hmm. has their servers right next to each other in data centers so the traffic can talk back and forth so you get fa faster speeds. All right, and how about, let's talk about the opportunities that exist in the retail space. Yeah, what's pretty interesting about uh, retail is that they're actually transforming into the digital age. So you're seeing omni-channel, multi-channel, mm -hmm. and what they're doing is they're actually um, catering now to consumer and companies' needs. So you're seeing a lot of technology be driven into it, as well as the experiential uh, real estate that's happening. So concerts are happening there. You're, you can go to a, a retail place. You're going to go see a movie, have a beer. There's right. concerts going on. So it's actually pretty interesting what's happening. That's what we see downtown in Brookfield. You yeah. have concerts, you can go to the bars. It's kind of an experience more than just going, okay, I'm just going to rent a random department store. Yeah, consumers are completely dependent on the consumer experience. Now they want these experiences. So, so retail is actually the gateway to those consumers. So you have to have the presence online, but also they want the experience offline that validates their purchases. All right, and let's wrap it up with industrial real estate. Yeah, what's fascinating about industrial is only 10% uh, of sales happen online, but it's a great growing space over 16% year over year. And industrial real estate is really uh, specialized on the last mile. As you can see, it's harder to get the, the products two people in a shorter amount of time frame. Think about two days shipping. So the industrial real estate space actually has that last mile that helps uh, their companies get the products to the consumer faster. So it's a very limited space. You'll see it's actually growing very significantly since the e-commerce boom and it's been the best, one of the best performing real estate asset classes. All right, well thank you very much for joining thank us you. at Market Tech. Great to see you again. And thank you for joining me. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.